Hi, and welcome to the videos for Math 126, the first uh, six ticket out the door uh, days of problems. So I want to go through these problems uh, in large part because, again, as I told my class, so if you're in the online class, maybe it's the first time you're hearing this, I think I've posted it online, but exam one is coming up, and the exam first exam is more or less the ticket out the door problem. It's just with different numbers essentially. So if you're able to do these ticket out the door problems, you really should not have any difficulty with exam one. So the first one, the first ticket out the door we had was on 127. And the first question is off the syllabus and it was what, what date and time is the final exam? And the answer is May 9th from 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. And so I asked this question because it's a Friday. I'm sorry, it's a Saturday. It's a Saturday right after review week. And so I just want everyone to make sure that you have that day off, that you're aware that that's the date that the exam is going to be. Uh, you're not waiting till finals week and then you happen to miss the final. So it's that Saturday. Now, let's get into some of the math questions. The first one, we want to evaluate. We have two fractions, 2 thirds plus 7 tenths. So with our basically fraction shortcut method, if we're adding or subtracting, we can do what? Well, it's almost like cross multiplication a little bit. We're going to multiply these two. We're going to multiply these two. So first we do the blue, then we do the red, always. So we have what? 2 times 10. And then whatever this sign is, that's what goes in the middle. Plus, and then 3 times 7. And the third part for the denominator is we multiply the denominator value. So uh, 3 times 10. So instead of having to try to find a common denominator and then convert both fractions, then go ahead and add them, we can do this method. It makes it a little bit easier on us. So we have what? 2 times 10 is 20. 3 times 7 is 21. 3 times 10 is 30. So this becomes 41 over 30. And that's your answer for that one. For number three, we have another fraction problem. And I'm going to go through these kind of quickly. Obviously, with them being on video, you can rewind, you can stop, you can try to track through if you need to. But it's another evaluate problem. And we have four fifths minus eight sevenths. So if we follow this same method, we go upper left to lower right first, so 4 times 7 minus, and be careful here because anytime we have a negative in the problem, that's potentially an issue, 5 times 8 all over 5 times 7. So this becomes 28 minus 40 all over 35, so this becomes negative 12 over 35 as our final answer. And the fourth problem we had on this date was a simplify. It was a compound fraction. And we do have a couple of these on the exam, so you should know how to do these types of problems. We simplify one third plus one-fourth all over one-fourth minus one-third. So again, we have two options here. We can combine the numerator, we can combine the denominator, and then we'll have two fractions, a fraction divided by a fraction, so we can do our key change flip. Or the other option is find the LCD and then multiply everything by the LCD. So my LCD here is what? The LCD is 12. So if 
I multiply everything by 12 over 1, if I do this correctly, the fractions should disappear. And then it makes my life a little bit easier. So from this first term, 12 cancels with 3, I get 4. 4 times 1 is 4. Plus, 4 cancels with 12 gives me 3. 3 times 1 is 3. 12 cancels with 4 gives me 3 again. Minus, 12 cancels with 3 gives me 4, so 4. Now I just end up with 4 plus 3 over 3 minus 4. So that's what? 7 divided by negative 1, which if I simplify it, just becomes negative 7. So that is the first four, well that's the first ticket out the door. Uh, there was four problems on there. So the second date that we had for our ticket out the door was the 29th. And again, in your notebook, so when you, when you come to the exam this next week, you will bring a ticket out the door notebook. And first page will be 127. Second page will be 129. Third page, etc., etc. So don't just bring me a bunch of loose leaf papers. Uh, don't bring me a notebook. It's like, oh, they're all in there somewhere. I'm not going to go looking for them. I want to be able to just look through in the first file, first six pages, rather. Um, I'll be able to see that. So on the 29th, we had three problems. The first one, and this is our radicals and our exponents section. So the first one we wanted to simplify, square root is 27 minus 2 times the square root of 12. So if we are going to add or subtract radicals, what do we have to have? We have to have the same root, so I can't do square root of a number plus the cube root of another number. They have to be both square roots. They both have to be cube roots, etc. And second, I have to have the same radicand. Radicand is the value underneath of the square of the root symbol, whether it's square root, cube root, etc. So right from the get-go, there's nothing I can do with this problem. Yes, they're both square roots, but I have a square root of 27 and square root of 12. So I can't do anything. However, Using my radical rules, I can simplify them. Because 27, square root of 27 is what? I can break this into 9 times 3. So this is square root of 9 times square root of 3. Square root of 9 is 3. So this guy ends up 3 root 3. And this actually helps me because now I know the only way I'm going to be able to combine this is if I can convert 12 to have a square root of 3 as well. And that's what? That's 4 times. So don't forget we have this minus 2 in front here multiplying all this. So square root of 4 times square root of 3. Square root of 4 is equal to 2. And again, this is all multiplication. 2 times square root of 12. So this becomes 2 times 2, which is 4, times square root of 3. And we have this minus sign here. So we end up with minus 4 root 3. And now, this is where some people run into trouble. They get confused with the radical there. Well, just think if this was x's instead of square roots. So if I had 3x minus 4x, what would I have? Negative 1x. So it's the same idea here with radicals. 3 root 3 minus 4 root 3 is negative 1 square root of 3. So that would be your answer for that one, for number one. You see I'm kind of drifting off the screen now, I'll try to stay within range here. All right, number two. Another simplify. We have the cube root of four times the cube root of four. So here, when I'm multiplying radicals, the radicand doesn't necessarily have to be the same. So if we even just look back here, square root of 4 times square root of 3 is the square root of 12. But I do have to have the same root. Well, in this case, I'm all right because I have the cube root on both of them. So if I have a cube root of A, uh, radical rules, times cube root of B, it's just the cube root of A times B. So cube root of 4 times 4. 
becomes what? Cube root of 16. But I want to simplify this completely. This is not simplified completely. So just like in this last problem, in number one, I was able to break down 12, but because I'm with cube roots, I want to break down 16 into perfect cubes. And my cube roots are what? One cube is one, two cube is eight, three cube, 27, four cube, uh, what is that, 256? Uh, or 64, four, 16, no, 254, 256. Anyway, we want a perfect cube that goes into 16, and that's what? That's eight. So this is cube root of eight times two, breaking it apart using our radical rule. This is cube root of eight times cube root of two. Cube root of eight is two. So the answer we should get as a final answer is two cube root of two. That's the answer to number two. And number three, the third problem we had was our exponent problem. So we want to simplify, and we're given negative 2, x to the third, y to the negative 2, all over 3, x to the negative first, y to the negative 3, all to the negative 2 power. So there's a few ways we can go about this. The way that I like to begin is to get rid of this negative on the outside. And the way we do that is what? We just flip everything inside. Don't change positive or negatives on the inside, just flip them. So whatever was on the bottom, the three x to the minus four and y to the minus three is now on the top. And then we have negative two x to the third, y to the negative two on the bottom. And the only thing that changes is this went from a negative two to a positive two by flipping it. So now we have to bring this two into every single piece inside of here. So I have what? Three squared. X minus one squared. Y to the negative three squared. Negative two squared. X to the third squared y to the minus 2 squared. So do each of these separately. Well, 3 squared is what? 3 times 3, that's 9. x to the negative first to the second power. This is one of our exponent rules. When we have a base to a power to a power, we multiply these two guys. So 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Same for the y. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Now be careful down here, we have negative two squared. So this is like negative two times negative two. Negative times negative is positive, so positive four. Three times two is six. Negative two times two is negative four. Now from here, so the number parts are done. There's nothing to do with them. I don't do nine minus four, like, oh, I wanna bring the four to the top or something. No, they're done. I'm going to end up with a 9 in the top and a 4 in the bottom. Now you can apply your exponent rules here. You can also do the shortcut that I showed you guys, which is what? Where for the x is, where is the bigger exponent? It's in the bottom, so the x value is going to end up in the denominator. And then it's what? It's just 6 minus, so wherever the bigger number is, we subtract the smaller number. So 6 minus a negative 2. And in the y, well, the y, the bigger number, is also in the bottom. Negative 4 is technically bigger than negative 6. So it's y, negative 4 minus a negative 6. So simplify this. The only thing we have in the top is a 9. 4 in the bottom. 6 minus negative 2 is like 6 plus 2. So we get x to the 8. And negative 4 plus 6 is positive 2. So your final answer should be 9 over 4x to the 8 y squared. So that's the end of those, the ticket out the door for that case, those three problems. And again, you didn't necessarily have to do it in that order. You might have a little different variation. 
Um, but regardless of which way you do it, that should have been your final answer. Third point for 2-3. Three. We have four uh, problems for this date. The first one, simplify completely. Uh, no negative exponents. So similar to what we just got done doing, so 2 x to the minus 1 y squared over 3 x squared y to the minus 1 everything to the negative third now. So same thing, going to flip what's inside. So 3x squared y to the minus 1 2 x to the minus 1 y squared and the only thing that changes is that exponent becomes positive. So from here, bring the 3 in. So it's 3 to the 3rd. x squared to the 3rd. y to the minus 1 to the 3rd. 2 to the 3rd. x minus 1 to the 3rd. y squared to the 3rd. So maybe do this. I know we didn't do it this way much in class, but write each one out to the third power. That way it doesn't confuse you what's going on with negative signs. So 3 to the third, that's 27. 2 times 3 is 6. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. 2 to the third is 8. x to the minus 3. y to the sixth. So again, the numbers are done. We're done manipulating those. We don't move one up to the other, or if one's negative, move it to the top to make it positive. No, they just, they're done. 27 and 8, stay where they are. So the x is bigger numbers up top. So 6 minus a negative 3. For the y, the bigger numbers in the bottom. So 6 also minus a negative 3. My final answer is 27. 6 minus negative 3 is like plus 3. So x to the 9th, 8y to the 9th. So that should be your answer for that one. And again, I know I'm going a little bit quick, racing it right away. If you need to, rewind the video, hit pause to kind of see what's going on if you want to look at the steps and all that, but you have that ability. Number two is factoring. We want to factor out the common term. So we have 2x to the third y minus 4xy squared plus 8xy to the third. So as far as the coefficients, we have a 2, 4, and 8. So the only thing I can take out is 2. For the x's, I have what? x to the third, x to the first, x to the first. So the only thing I can take out is x to the first. And for the y's, I have y to the first, second, third. So I can only take out 1. And so then the process is what? For all the number parts, because I took out a 2, I'm going to divide everything by 2. This isn't very good. I'll divide everything by 2. For the x's, because I factored out 1x, essentially what it means is I'm subtracting 1 from all the uh, x exponents. And same thing for the y. I'm subtracting 1 from all of the y exponents. I started with three terms. I need to end with three terms inside of whatever I factored out. So I get what? 2 divided by 2 is 1. 3 minus 1 is 2, so I have an x squared. 1 minus 1 is 0. Anything to the 0 power is 1, so the y just becomes a 1. So all I'm left with from this first term is an x squared. And then minus. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 1 minus 1 is 0, so that becomes 1. 2 minus 1 is 1, so 2y to the first is what I'm left with there. And last but not least, plus 8 divided by 2 is 4. 1 minus 1, also gone again. 3 minus 1 is 2. So your final
final answer should be 2xy times, and my three terms, x squared minus 2y plus 4y squared. Number three, we want to factor completely. And we have x to the third plus 4x squared minus x minus 4. So, I have four terms. What does that mean? That should be screaming at you four terms factor by grouping. If it's not, you need it to start doing that. Put a note on your cheat sheet or a highlight on your cheat sheet, circle it, whatever. If I get four terms, factor by grouping. So from these first two terms, what can I pull out? I can pull out an x squared. And just like that last problem, what am I doing? Well, I'm subtracting two from both of these. So when I do that, what am I left with? x plus four. And again, similar to our radicals, if we're adding or subtracting radicals, if I know one part of it, it kind of leads me to, okay, what does the other part need to be? The only way I can finish the factor by grouping is if this side over here also has an x plus 4. So from these two terms, what do I need to factor out in order to get an x plus 4? Well, it's a minus 1. So now I have this term minus this term. So what am I factoring out of here? The common term is x plus 4. And what am I left with? Well, when I take this out, I'm left with x squared. And when I take this off, I'm left with minus 1. Am I done? No, I'm not. Why? Because it says factor completely. And when I see two terms with a squared in it, my thought in a minus sign, my first thought there should be difference of squares. So I have two things in this problem. First off, four terms, factor by grouping. Two terms with a squared and a minus, difference of squares. So this guy actually factors into what? We have our x plus 4 from here, but this piece, difference of squares, factors into x plus 1, x minus 1. So that should be your final answer. That is factored completely. And last but not least, number four from this ticket out the door. And this was sort of used as a preview for what was coming up in the next class period when we learned binomial theorem. But for this one, we had what? Expand x plus 2 squared. And so, again, the reason I told you guys, the reason we jumped from 1, 3 to 12, 6 is to oh, potentially avoid an error that a lot of people make with this. Because people think they have to do what? Oh, this is an exponent, so I need to just bring this into both terms. And that is not true. That is not what the exponent rule says. Because of this plus sign in here, we can't do that. What this guy really means just as if I have 2 squared means 2 times 2, this means x plus 2 times x plus 2. And now that we know the binomial theorem, we also know that what? Whatever this number is, so 2, when we're done expanding this, we should have how many terms? 2 plus 1, so 3. So if you FOIL this, you get what? x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 4. So your final answer when you combine your like terms should be x squared plus 4x plus 4. So that was the fourth problem for that day on uh, February 3rd. The next ticket out the door is from February 5th. First one, probably getting sick of seeing these. Good. And hopefully that means you know what you're doing. So we have what? Negative 3 x squared y to the minus third over x to the negative 2 y all to the negative third power again. So let's start with what's inside. So x to the minus 2 
2y all over negative 3x squared, y to the minus third. The only thing that changes in step one is that becomes positive. Everything else, we just flip what's inside. So bring in the threes. I have x to the minus 2 to the third. y to the first to the third. Negative 3 to the third. x squared to the third y to the minus 3 to the third. So what do we get here? Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Looks like the invisible 1 here, so 1 times 3 is 3. Negative 3 to the third. This means what? This means negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. So that's what? Negative 27. 2 times 3 is 6. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. So again, the number part is not going to move. Negative 27 is going to stay in the denominator. Bigger number for x is in the denominator. 6 minus six, the negative 6 is like 6 plus 6, which is 12. And for the y terms, the bigger number is in the top. 3 minus a negative 9 is like 3 plus 9, which is also 12. So your final answer should be y to the 12 over negative 27 x to the 12. If you want to move the negative in front, that's fine, but if you leave it like that, that's fine. That would be good for full credit. Number 2. Another one of our radical problems. So simplify. We have square root of 12 minus 2 root 3 plus 4 times the square root of 75. So, this guy kind of gives us an indication what we need, the square root of 3. So, where is 12 divided by 3? Yes, 4. So, we have what? Square root of 4 times square root of 3. Square root of 4 is 2. So this one just reduces to 2 root 3 minus 2 root 3. And then same thing here. So we have 4 times 75. So divided by 3 is like 25 times 3. Square root of 25 is 5. So this part is really 5 root 3. So this is 4 times 5 times square root of 3. These two cancel out. We did a very good job writing that problem, but that's what happened there. And then we have what? 4 times 5. So it's not 4 plus 5, it's 4 times 5. So 20 square root of 3 should have been your final answer. Number 3. We have expand, and it's x minus 2y to the fourth power. So this is our binomial theorem problem. Notice it doesn't say expand using Pascal's triangle, or expand using binomial theorem, or I guess you could just multiply this thing out four times if you want. I'd recommend against it. It usually doesn't turn out well. But if we're going to use Pascal's triangle, if I have the fourth power, that means what? I'm going to have five terms. So on my Pascal's triangle, I get what? One, four, six, four, one. And what do I do? I start with x to the nth power, four. So x to the four, and then go down by one. x to the third, x squared, x to the first, x to the zero. And then for my b term, negative 2y starts at 0, goes up by 1. So 0, 